want to, um, I want to introduce right now Patrick Sabat. Patrick has been the custodian of this statue, certainly for us for a good number of years, and his history goes back. I'll let him explain all of that. We want to explain in his presentation the importance of these statue visitations, okay? This is not, it is a statue, certainly, but Our Lady travels with this, and the beautiful graces that have come as a result of this, he can attest to. So let me introduce Patrick Sabat. Just a microphone because as you can see, he's a six foot two and I am five four. I am about a foot taller than the statue, which I have been carrying for the last 20 years now. Well, almost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, the Holy Mary, Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. What is Christ's promise? In the scriptures, he said that, that I may live in you and you in me forever. To save souls that we may be with Jesus and the role of Our Lady and the statue to save souls we need to see Christ clearly. We need to give Christ to others that we too may see God like Mary. To be open to God's mercy and be generous in mercy for others. My dear friends, this is a call to be holy. The history of the statue, I can tell you more about it and the stories that come with it. 1947, October 13, the same day. Our Lady who appeared in Fatima, Portugal. The statue that's here today, that's traveling the world since 1947, is the accurate depiction of the lady dressed in white. Rendered and perfected by Jose Tadim, who is considered the Michelangelo of Portugal, according Beginning in 1947, with Our Lady's Blue Army, with Mr. John Hafford, with a mission and therefore endowed with the rich history of its nonstop travels for 75 years around the globe in more than 100 countries. The physical presence of the statue is the moral presence of Our Lady, who by God's will intervened in history. This representation of Mary is indeed a piece of history, an artifact, if you will. It is a historical artwork blessed by the Bishop of Fatima and Pope Pius XII. The gesture of the church shortly after the Second World War. Take note of the date, 1947, after the Second World War. And in 1917, that was during the Great War. To put the, the statue's place in history, we can understand that even non-Catholics need to respond to its deep roots of, of the evangelical calls to prayer, penance, and conversion. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, referring to the message of Our Lady of Fatima when he visited the shrine, he said to accept the prayer, penance, conversion the great message of hope, the message of Our Lady given at Fatima. He said, this is the correct response to this moment in our history. Prayer, penance, and conversion. What did Our Lady say? In Our, in, 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 in our Lady's gesture, 
when Sister Lucia spoke with the artist, asking her, asking him when he was sculpting the statue, it should be lifelike. And in this gesture, I may not need to tell you what Our Lady said, but what did she say? To pray in this gesture. I want you all to get the chance to come close to the statue. She has been in the presence of millions and millions of people. I'm not exaggerating. And in this gesture, she said, pray and pray and pray a great deal for many souls go to hell for there's no one praying and making sacrifices for their conversion. Our Lady did not smile. She was serious. It's a serious request from the Blessed Mother of God. The reason why they sent this beautiful image, not only because we need a reminder, we do not bring her to museums to display a magnificent work of art. This is a representation. This is not a trophy that we have accomplished something like a World Cup or something, and then we would parade it around the world. No, this is a reminder that there, there's a lot of work to be done, and this is the reason why Our Lady's Blue Army, the Word Apostolate of Fatima, still goes out there to promote what Our Lady asks. And in this representation, for 75 years now, and I can tell you, I have the honor and privilege of being standing here before you. I am, I am not a saint, I am, I am Patrick the sinner. But I'm asking you, this is not the words of Patrick. This short guy from the Philippines, this is coming from, from the Blessed Mother of God. The statue is the appearance of Our Lady of the Message. It is a reminder of an event of who, what, where and whom. There is a message, my dear brothers and sisters. And if this is more like a reenactment of what happened in Fatima, the Blessed Mother is appearing right before us today in this presence, in her presence. She's asking us the same thing because the message was not only meant for the children of Portugal. It's not only meant for Sister Lucia, and her two cousins who are now the youngest non-martyred church, non-martyred saints in the history of the church, Saint Francisco and Saint Jacinta. The image signifies there is work to be done, a message that needs a specific response, a recognition of something that there still needs to be accomplished. That is the reason why we still travel, you know, from 1947, not to tell the story of Fatima, but the story of Fatima did not end in 1917 or 1947. It continues even today. You know, when we give presentations to schools and young children, I always ask them if they love stories. Do you love stories? I bet you do. How does a story usually begin? Once upon a time, right? How does it usually end? And they live happily ever after. But the story of Fatima is not a fairy tale. It's a true story. It's not a once upon a time, 1917. That's why we have the history and the stories that goes with it. Our Lady is asking us the same request she asked St. Francisco, St. Jacinta, Sister Lucia. The message is not only meant for the Portuguese or people who were living in 1917. It's for you and for me. That is why when we kneel before her, we always go to our mothers, asking our mothers, asking Mary to respond to our prayers, right? In Fatima, it's a little different. She came to us, asking us to say yes to God. She is a mother. And obviously the world needs it even more today 
because of its relevance and urgency. The world continues to offend the Lord even more with their sins and blasphemies. The world is still at war with evil. Or we, have we allowed selfishness and pride and all kinds of sin to reign in our family, in our country, allowing abortion and keeping silent about our God-given right to life? My dear friends, Our Lady is asking us, in times of darkness and every day, she continues to bring us the light of the world. You know, Fatima is Eucharistic centered. Our devotion to Mary does not end with more flowers and candles to Mary. According to St. Louis de Montfort, true devotion to Mary naturally leads to the adoration of Christ the Lord in his most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity. It is only the light of Christ that can dispel the darkness of this world. True peace can only come from God. The Canticle of Zechariah in the Gospel of Luke tells us about this. It says, In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is what happened on October 13, 1917, the great miracle of the sun. Mary shows us and gives us Jesus shining in times of darkness. I bet you know the song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. I don't want to sing. I'm, I'm really bad at it. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Peace, who is God. Peace that comes from right here. My dear friends, I have seen so many wonderful things with Our Lady. Again, I am so blessed to be here. Such an honor to be traveling with Our Lady. I can tell you more stories. I, I remember we were setting up the statue. Have you seen that little girl when we were crowning her? Everybody saw it, right? It's so cute. She, you know, all childlike. You know, she was reaching out to Our Lady for some reason. Children have that sense of holiness and generosity to give their life, to give, you know, and trust. I can tell you, when we travel, pardon me, I'm going to grab my bag. This is how we travel with Our Lady of Fatima. Since 1947, she always had a full-time statue custodian, right? 75 years she's been on the road. I'm not that old. I was like, I was lighter. I was 25 years old when I started. So if I can show you how we travel. So when we fly internationally, or, you know, domestically, if we're here, we bring the RV, Our Lady's Recreational Vehicle, right? Our Lady's Motorhome. But on the plane, of course, she's right here, and we put the seat belt on so nobody could see, right? It's a soft, soft padded bag. But once in a while, we get the pilot to make an announcement. He would say, folks, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a safe flight today. We have a very special passenger. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? And one time we, were, uh, uh, we had a layover in one of the airports. Let me see how much time I have here. <laughs> they have a trap door. If they don't like what I'm saying, I'm boom, I'm gone, right? And if it's time, uh, mass will be starting uh, soon. But let me tell you this story. One time we had a layover at the airport. Who can tell if I'm dragging this in the airport, can you tell if it's a statue, a religious object? You know, they go through the TSA and every single time, this is what, is that a cello, is that a guitar? But one time, I was just sitting waiting for a flight. I was seated with a priest and um, a little girl, about that age, maybe five, six years old, she was, running around in the airport, you know, maybe bored or something. But then she came across 
this bag. And she stopped like this. She was about this high. And she did this. She held onto the face of Our Lady without knowing it's a bag or a statue. She did this and made the sign of the cross. And she started playing again. And my priest friend and I looked at each other. What just happened? So my friends, let us be childlike. Let us honor Our Lady the way it should be in this beautiful image of Our Lady. You know, she has performed miracles along the way. Even at the very beginning, even Pope Pius XII remarked over the Vatican radio, when they blessed the statue, he said, we crowned Our Lady of Fatima as queen of the world. And the next year, he said, she set forth as though to claim her dominion. And the wonder she performs along the way are such that we can hardly believe what we are seeing with our own eyes. Such is the charisma of the Pilgrim Virgin statue. Such is the charisma of our mother. Let me tell you one quick story. One early morning, a lady went in to wake up her son. Wake up, son, it's time to go to school. The son asked, but why, mom? I don't want to go to school. Mom said, give me two reasons why you don't want to go. The son replied, well, the kids, they hate me for one, and the teachers, they hate me too. Mom said, oh, that's no reason to not to go to school. Come on now and get ready. The son asked, mom, give me two reasons why I should go to school. <laughs> the mother replied, well, for one, you're 52 years old, <laughs> and for another, you're the principal of your school. My friends, is there a time in our life that we say, Mom, I don't need your help anymore? Mom, I'm 50. Mom, I'm a nurse. Mom, I'm a doctor. I'm an engineer. I'm this and that. I'm a professor. Our Lady comes to us today. We are so blessed to come here. The Lord has invited us in His mercy. We are here for a reason. Maybe we are grieving. Maybe we are sick. We are asking Our Lady to help us and guide us. But she is also asking you to respond, to be part of Our Lady's Blue Army, to say yes to God. My dear friends, I invite you to say yes to Our Lady and to answer the only question she asks in Fatima, Portugal, to the young shepherd children. And if indeed this is the time that we need to respond, again, the message was not only meant for them, but for you. Right now, she is asking you to the only question, let me repeat, the only question she asked in Fatima. You want to hear what it is? She asked Sister Lucia, Francisco and Jacinta, are you willing to accept the suffering God wishes for you in reparation of sin, for the conversion of sinners? And I'd like you to say yes to Mary. Are you willing to accept the suffering, the crosses in your life God wishes for you? Will you say yes to Mary? You know how she responded to the yes of the shepherd children? She said, go then, but you will have much more to suffer. But the grace of God, my immaculate heart, will always be your refuge 
and the way that will lead you to God. We, will you still say yes even if it means suffering and sorrow? Will you still say yes to Our Lady? Yes. Then you know the answer. But she promised, my Immaculate Heart will always be your refuge, your consolation, and the way that will lead you to God. I invite you today to say that yes, that pledge that Sister Lucia and John Hafford formulated to become part of Our Lady's Blue Army. I'd like you all in silence of your hearts to experience the presence of Mary, to kneel before her. This is Fatima. Make that moment in Fatima, Portugal, this moment. That moment with the young saints, with Our Lady, your moment. And I invite every one of you, even those who are watching remotely, to invite Our Lady to your parishes, in your dioceses. Go to our website, bluearmy.com. Learn more about it. Contact us that we may establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary through statue visitations. Establish all night vigils in reparation for the sins of mankind. Eucharistic reparation. Reparation, reparation. That we may be like Mary. That we may be like Francisco, Jacinta, and Sister Lucia. Thank you all so much for coming here today. Such a beautiful day. It's such a beautiful blessing. God bless us all.